Good morning, everyone. I'm going to show you my beautiful cheese. Again, this cheese is my tofu cheese. I changed it up a little. I did not put the mushroom powder in this one. I put less sauerkraut. I'll write a PDF for you and you'll have all the ingredients I use to make this one cheese. It has more of a fresh, not as strong as my provolone, but it's still a nice sharp cheese because what we do like is a little bit of sweetness and a little bit of, we like the flavors where you have that strong cheese, but then you have that little sweetness in it. And my daughter loves, especially around the holidays, she loves cranberries in her cheese. So we have some beautiful cranberries here that we're going to use. So I am going to leave half of it, half we're going to mix a little bit of cranberry and we're going to put them back in the fridge, let them cool off again just in case it gets a little soft and then we're going to be able to shape them into discs and put them to age for a couple of days and hopefully I should be able to wax them. If not, we're, if we don't get them waxed, we're going to eat them the way they are. Okay, so we're going to take a little bit of this cheese. And you're probably wondering, why am I doing it now and not when this was a little wetter? Because if I would have done it when it was a little wetter, we would have had a pig cheese. So by firming up the cheese and then mixing in the cranberries, my cheese will stay more the color of the cheese and not the color of the cranberries. The cranberries will soften up in the cheese. Now how much you put is really up to you. We don't want to put too many. And now we're just going to give it a little mix. gonna have a nice cranberry cheese for Eric. Okay, I'm gonna add a couple of seeds in this one. Okay, we're going to take a couple of, not a couple, a little bit of pumpkin seeds and I'm going to quickly just pulse it in my food processor just to break it up a little. Christmas cheese for my daughter. Not just my daughter, we're all gonna enjoy it. Okay. Erica, you want white pepper in your cheese? No, please. Okay. All right. Um, I was going to put some pepper in this one, but Erica said no. Okay, a little extra cranberry. Now you can also break them up if you want and make them a little smaller. So this is already good to shape, I think. That should be good the way it is. Okay. I don't even I don't even have to put that back in the fridge. It's still nice and it's nice and firm right now. I put pumpkin seeds inside. Oh, you put them already. Okay, sure. Inside. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Okay. Normally when I make my 
when I make my uh, cranberry, what I do is I, the outside of my cheese will be crushed walnuts, but I ran out of that, so it's going to be starch on the outside. Erica says I could have used some pumpkin seeds. I put some inside, so we're not going to, uh, yeah. It is what it is. Okay, so I'm going to make one big cheese for her. I mean, I call it big, but it's not that big. And as you can see, this has been in the, in the refrigerator overnight. So I can handle it. My hands are washed, by the way. Okay. And we're going to just dust it. And shape it the best we can. And she's going to have a nice cranberry cheese for the holidays. Like I said, this one is almost like my provolone. But I will make a PDF file for whoever is interested in purchasing it. Otherwise, you could simply get creative and put what you would like in the cheese. Okay, so it's a nice size cheese. Now, of course, by adding some paper on the outside, it will keep its shape. Or if you want to press this into a mold, you can do that also. But if you want it to dry quickly, I say shape it this way. Okay, so basically you heard a sound and that's my microwave where I sterilize my paper that I wrap my cheese with. I just want to trim it a little more. This is paper that I keep when I get packages. Oops. And I like to reuse it and not waste it. So if you want to sterilize it, just pop it in the microwave and you're good to go. Okay. Now we're going to use a little bit of cheese on my finger and that becomes my cheese glue. When I say cheese glue, that's what it is. And that's just helps me hold my paper in place. And this is going to be probably mostly Erica's. <laughs> when her and her boyfriend get the cranberry cheese, they really, really go at it. Okay, so we're going to go once, twice, almost like doing surgical stitches. And this way it stays put, and then you can make your last knot. And you will see when this starts drying on you, you will see that the paper is actually going to loosen up from your disc. I press it in, and that fills up the whole disc nice and firm. And then, of course, we're going to put a cranberry, a cranberry on top just so I know what's in it. And Erica knows which one is hers. And of course, we are going to salt the top of the cheese. And we're going to push this to the side. And it's going to go on a, um, a wire rack with paper towels underneath. As soon as I get a chance, I'm going to go get it. But for now, I'm just going to put it aside. You get another piece of parchment. Not parchment, my left Okay, so done with the cranberries. Okay.
I'm just going to put a little bit of starch and salt. I should show you it. Eh? So you don't just look at an empty... Uh... Okay, so I'm going to place my salt on... The, uh, my salt. I'm going to place my cheese on this. For now. And I am going to just put a little bit of starch and some salt. And we're going to grab our cheese. Perfect. And it goes on top of there until I'm ready. Beautiful. Push it aside. And now I'm going to push this aside for a bit. And we're going to start with this cheese. This is why I made it a little more plain because I will add some stuff to this. Now, if I had red peppercorns, I'd be crushing that. But it looks like either I can't find it in my pantry or I don't have any left. So I am going to use white peppercorns. And that is really up to you how much you want to use. You don't have to use a lot. Here it is. Look and you shall find. Okay, I'm just going to crush them a bit. But if some of them stay whole, I don't mind. And it just comes to show you how creative you can really be with your cheeses. I love the taste of black pepper. So that cheese is probably going to be mine for sure. Wow. My daughter Amanda loves any cheese I make. Okay, so we're going to just dump this in here for now. Makes it easy for me to mix it. Just break it up. Now these ones, I won't make them as big as Erica's. Okay. Peppercorn. I love me some peppercorn. Okay. Are you ready for this, guys? Since it's all crumbly like this. I'm going to put just a drizzle of maple that is going to go in between those cracks. Okay. Okay, we're going to start off with one scoopful. Press it down. Black. Salt. And we're going to get another scoopful. Goes right on top. And now we're going to shape our cheese. My oh my, this is going to be just delicious. There you go. That is black salt. Okay, try to get some on the sides. Okay. 
that uh, the um, the starch is going to make a lovely skin for us. Okay, just trim this up. Now, someone said they used paper, but she got some um, some mold on her cheese. If you see your paper is getting wet, you can replace it. If you're afraid of getting any type of mold on your cheese, um, you just have to keep the moisture away. That is the trick, is keep the moisture away. Because if you keep moisture on your cheese, it will grow some kind of mold. Okay, a little bit of cheese glue. And now I am going to wrap it. And you have to have a good temperature for your cheese. The trick is you have to check it every day. Oh, let me do my double flip. There you go. And we're going to have some beautiful cheese for Christmas. I will be making more later, so I'll probably make you another video of the new one I'm going to make. And of course, on top of this one, we are going to add some beautiful black salt, which tells me that's the cheese I'm making. Some pink salt on my parchment that I'm going to place it on. Just like I did the other one. And I'm going to put this aside right on top of the salt and starch until I'm ready to put this in my garage. Okay. There we go. I need a little more starch. Okay, so I buy this on Amazon. I buy big bags of starch. Uh, but you could go to your local um, Asian grocery store and you will find starch there for like a dollar or two tapioca starch and that one is just as good I just didn't want to have to run out to the store so I just bought it on Amazon okay here is that black salt on top hmm there we go makes such a pretty cheese when you cut into this one maybe I'll make a little TikTok or something to show you what it's like when I crack it open this Christmas okay ice cream scoop full on top and we gently press it down and we shape our cheese just want to get it off so I was able to make three about well, one plus two smallish cheese discs with this one block of tofu. And remember in the beginning, if you're afraid to make cheese because you haven't done it before and you're not sure if you're going to like it, don't start making like four blocks of tofu because you want to have a lot of cheese at home. I say start with a little bit. And then if you like the taste of it or you, um, you're you okay with the recipe, then you could go ahead, of course, and make a lot more. You also have to know how and where you keep it if it's going to work for you, right? Like, do you have enough room in your fridge? If you don't have it and you're putting your cheese, then you're not going to be able to put any vegetables in your in your fridge because it's going to be loaded in cheese, right? If you're lucky and you have a second refrigerator, that's great. But, uh, yeah, make a little bit in the beginning. And then if you know you have the space and you know you have, you like the ingredients, then you could go ahead and make more. 
it's so fast that it's just great. Okay, let me get some more paper here. Are you happy you got your cranberry, Erica? I'm very happy. You're happy, I'm happy. And yes, you can microwave your paper and kill whatever bacteria is on it. Always keep your hands clean. Don't be touching anything that you're that's not cheese related. If you're making cheese, you gotta have everything you need around you and not there we go. A little bit of cheese glue. You don't want to contaminate anything, right? Okay, cheese glue, perfect cheese glue. And you could also microwave your jute. Just put it in, 30 seconds does the trick. If you're worried. If you're not worried, just go ahead. I know I've made cheese where, you know, I just make cheese. Okay. Now you don't have to use black salt. You can use charcoal, that's pretty. Uh, you can use paprika inside your layers you can use um, so many things wait till you see what I'm gonna do to my next batch I'm gonna make now my daughter says I should start selling my cheese again we shall see if I can do it I'll do it put this aside a little salt down at the bottom here and it looks like I have a lot of salt in there, but when you crack this open, uh, it really isn't a lot. And then again, if you don't like doing it this way, don't do it this way. Put something else. Put herbs in there, right? Okay, a little pinch to tell me what's in my cheese. And off to the side it goes. this I could definitely put back into my bag because I'll be making more cheese later and I'm going to use up whatever tapioca starch I have left here. There we go. I do not waste. I've always done it this way and if you're not okay with it, don't do it that way guys. Okay, I obviously need new tape here. Okay. Now something else you could do if you don't want to put maple uh, the way I did, you could thicken your maple and it'll stay in your cheese. Uh, I mean the cheese is still going to absorb it so wherever the maple went when you cut that cheese it's going to have that nice little sweetness on that section and then with the salt and the black pepper it's just like pop of flavors all over your mouth. So don't be afraid to get creative guys. All right, there we go. My beautiful rack that I use for cheese. I'll be popping that in my mouth later. There we go. Starch and salt underneath. You're probably wondering why do I have it on the side here? If you've been making cheese already, you have an idea why. Because <laughs> when I go flip it, I flip it on a piece of dry. So that's salt and starch for the next time when I when I flip my cheese. So how simple was that? I took tofu, changed up the recipe a little bit. I will share the recipe, how I did it. And then I seasoned my cheese or dressed my cheese a little different. This one's got cranberries and some crushed pumpkin seeds. Uh, this one has 
black salt and some black pepper that I crushed. This one doesn't have the black pepper. This one's got black pepper, this one, and the black salt. This one just has cranberries and that delicious um, pumpkin seeds that I crushed. And this is going to be some other cheeses that I will put out on the table at uh Actually, I'm going to put this out, to, not at Christmas. We will have one at Christmas, uh, but we're celebrating Christmas at my sister's, and then uh, New Year's, everybody's coming to my house, so some of these cheese will be ready for New Year's. And this is the salt that I used. Let me show you which one I used. I did pick this up on Amazon, I'll tell you. Okay, it's called the Diamond Black. There you go. Beautiful black salt that you can use in your cheese or on your cheese. How beautiful is this? Flaky. Mmm. So good. I love it. I'm not a salty, uh, super salty eater, but when you get that little punch of salt in your mouth, it just, mm, so good. And remember, you're not going to sit here and eat the whole disc. You will be mindful and just have a little bit. Otherwise, you'll be making cheese every day. All right, guys, I'm going to say again, I love you. And if you like a video like this, if you want to see more videos like this, uh, just leave a comment saying yeah I want to see more give me a like and don't forget I'm putting up some PDF files so I'm gonna say I love you guys and if I don't speak to you soon have a great holiday and if I have some more to share with you hopefully I'll have it up before the holidays I'll try and get this one up right away it's very easy I just wanted to show you how you could dress some cheese and using the tofu uh, rather than nuts remember i made three big blocks of cheese for like a couple of dollars you can't beat that price if you would be using cashews you'd be spending a lot of money and same thing with almonds so you could really enjoy and make cheese at a fraction of the price and remember when you're making cheese like this you're leaving the animals alone and that's a good thing so i'm going to say i love you guys and i'll see you in my next video